Hello, everybody. My name is Tom, and welcome to or welcome back to my channel. So today, um, this is our second video in the Beanie Puppy Cat like lore series. Um, out of three videos, so one more after this, and then I think I'm done with Beanie Puppy Cat until season two comes out, just because there's not really a whole lot of information to go off of, and you know, I feel like after a certain point, you know. Just like gotta be done with it you know what i'm saying um so today i thought we'd watch some uh being able to cut lazy in space preview uh breakdown previews big <laughs> preview breakdown um uh from cartoon universe so it's just a basically kind of like a breakdown talking about like uh, what we have the i guess the leaks quote unquote leaks that we have so far for being with Lazy in space kind of going through them to trying to figure out like what's going to happen in season two um i know the home section two has been leaked already online but i i am waiting to watch it on um netflix first i want to watch i want to react to it first time first hand so plus i want to support the creators and people who are involved so i'm waiting watch it when it comes out on netflix and you should do the same thing too um so i'm i have not seen, so this is my first time this is my first time first reaction of seeing what exactly lives in space is about i haven't seen anything about it but i decided that it'd be like uh just to i think it'd be cool just to kind of like hype ourselves up a bit for lazy in space and just to check out like just get a little bit of like information a little bit of knowledge of what we're like what they're working out what we have in store but Anyways, um, without further ado, let's get into this video. There is still no release date in sight for Lazy in Space, unfortunately, and since we were able to get a full breakdown of the first episode, we thought it might be a fun idea to compile as much of the behind-the-scenes information, clips, stills, and production art as we can to figure out exactly what is going on throughout the whole season, and boy does it look good. But before we do, do you like being Puppy Cat? Do you like Sailor Moon? If the answer to both of those questions oh, was yes, merch. come check out our new- Speaking of merch, um, <clears throat> quick little promo real fast. Um, I have an Etsy store where I sell stickers. I also do a mashup of different characters like, like example, Star from the Forces of Evil and Ego from Kim Possible. What do you do when you mash those together? You get Star and Chigo. Um, it's not the official name, but yeah. Anyways, if you want that sticker, um, it's available in my Etsy shop down below, as well as many other stickers as well of other art that I have done. Anyways, yeah. Sorry, quick ad. Now, let's get back to the video. Season 1 of Puppy Cat featured largely self-contained episodes. Deckard is focused on in the beginning, Cardamon comes in during the second story, and then neither are actually focused on again until the four-part finale. Part of this is because the show only had 10 minutes to tell each of its stories in season 1, so all had to get their focus in one go. Lazy in Space, on the other hand, has full 22 minute episodes like a traditionally mm -hmm. animated half hour show that. on TV, so we'll have time to explore each of the characters piece by piece in each episode. So far, each episode still seems to have a self-contained plot and will often be in Puppy Cat finding a reason to do a temp job, but the surrounding characters will have smaller journeys that build into the bigger story over the course of the season. <laughs> At what the end of season one, teeth? Deckard of course left to go to the Prince Cooking Academy, but in his yeah. place we will be getting a yeah. much bigger focus on Cass and his brothers, which is amazing because up until the end of the final story in season one, we didn't even know he had brothers. We managed to get an interview with someone who saw episode one at the Toronto International Animation Festival, and it would appear that the character Lucky. Toast is supposedly pregnant with one of his brother's babies. I was hoping season two would focus on Cass returning to wrestling to chase her passions. What? That's so random. How did, what? How did that happen? That's super random. But I'm intrigued. I know that he toast knows his sister, but interesting, interesting. If she's the worst in her league, but we've seen virtually no indication of that. 
There is some artwork from Natasha herself showing her and Toast fighting, but it doesn't seem to be production artwork, just some fun ideas she wanted to put on paper. And with Toast pregnant, I don't know how much fighting she'll be able to do anyways. Instead, the season seems to be focusing on the stresses of her coding job, with an episode revolving around her taking the day off and having a mental breakdown as she threatens to kill her brother for trying to take her blanket as she goes into the bathroom with it. Later in the season, we also see her spill a drink on her computer, making her lose all the work she had thus far. I think all of this will be pushing her towards trying something new, if not wrestling. But what about the rest of the brothers, and how does the show keep them relevant to be other than them sharing the same apartment complex as her? Well, in episode 2, we see that B decides to revisit the cat cafe that she used to work at, one that some of the brothers worked at as well as Deckard, and it's implied that one of them may even own it, as his personal vehicle is the cat cafe delivery car, though he may just be using it So, one thing I wanted to, like, mention is that, um... When I was watching Bean Puppy Cat, like the whole toast thing, it just seemed super random. Um, I know that they only have like a 10 minute slot to like introduce these characters, but to me, Toast and the brothers and the family were like so uh, random to me. I thought they kind of felt like, like, out of like the I feel like not really a main part of the story um Cardamon I feel like it seems like a very important part of the story I get that but I feel like I feel like Toast and her family seem like a background characters like you know comedic relief background characters really than like a full story so it looks like they're really like introducing um the guy's family whose name I cannot remember um who went off to culinary school I mean, so it seems like they're introducing his family more into the story so i'm curious if they are important to like the overall plot line or if they're just like adding the characters in just to like add the characters in so i'm curious to see how that's gonna work out because they don't, didn't really seem like it seemed like an interesting bunch like it's very like an interesting family but like i like like how did they tie into like the overall like story the overall plot and I'm very interested in seeing. I personally, even though it belongs to the owner of the cafe, since he works there. As you can imagine, B seems to have left her wallet at home, so she can't actually pay for whatever food she and Puppy Cat have bought. It seems like it'll be like in episode 1 of season 1, where she has to sneak off to do temp work with the hope of paying the bill before it's noticed that she's gone. <laughs> I can't wait to see how that goes terribly wrong. Along the way, there also seems to be flashbacks of when B worked there with Deckard, as well as the time when Cass was there too, probably showing us what led to her quitting and getting into coding. I imagine we'll see the beginning of Deckard's and B's relationship here, a meet-cute to get us reinvested in their dynamic. After that, episode 3 includes a scene where B finally reads the letter that Deckard left her at the end of season 1. In it, he is oh, cashing yeah. in an IOU that B gave him, something she gave out to co-workers to take on extra work so she could take a nap during her shift. In return for those favors, he is asking her to keep an eye on his family for him, which she seems to take very seriously, as a lot of the future episodes seem to revolve oh. around the brothers in okay. some way. I answer my question. Toward That's the end of the involved. season, Deckard will be making a real appearance, however, as we can see that there are scenes that are of him seemingly at his new school with a cooking class rival to boot. There's no indication yet that he will return to the island this season, but I think it is very likely that he'll come back in the final episode. Like with season 1, it will likely be a big climactic one that takes what we know about the characters and their journeys and pushes them in a new direction. Hopefully it won't take another 5 years to figure out what happens in season 3 though. We're still waiting on season 2 after all. Then of course there is Cardamon, whose story was left off in season 1, with his mother crying tears after eating a magic donut with Mother's something so weird in the tears, seemingly jellyfish. The show is weird, but his story is definitely the weirdest now that I say all that out loud. Well, thanks to the first episode reviewer, we know that the season picks up with him putting his mom's tears in a bag and using them to water plants. Despite being tears, they are more gelatinous and are able to be moved by hand for whatever reason. 
When used on plants, they grow into beautiful and sometimes weird things. He leaves a bag of them huh. outside with a sign that says, please use. A future episode that seems to be his focal one for the season shows him growing frustrated with what has been happening to him and breaking down in tears in front of B. She seems to try and cheer him up this episode, and maybe we'll take him on a temp job or do one with the hopes of buying him something he needs with the money she gets. The same episode shows the three of them returning to the video game arcade, which is really mysterious. Perhaps there is something there yes, he thinks yes, that can is, help is, cart is, him on, or perhaps she thinks that a day of playing video games would make him feel better. But she I've heard some theories that the like arcade is like her father's arcade or something, or she went there with like her father or something like that. Um. I can't remember the full theory, but like the arcade is like I feel like an important part of the story. So it's interesting that they're going back there. Realizes Cardamon isn't like the other kids, and that will just annoy him. In a storyboard for what I think is the end of the episode, B has tucked Cardamon in, and he is looking at some strange item that seems to be in one of his mom's tears. Throughout the season, we see all sorts of things inside of them, and oh I like to think it's because Cardamom's As wish was to provide her son with everything a great. kid wants, which is why I think there is a video game type toy in this particular tier. It also looks like we'll be getting a new character in his life named Mrs. Coffee Cup. Cardamon seems rude to her, insulting her for cutting her own hair, but in another shot seems to be brushing her hair for her. I personally think that she is Cardamon's teacher, as her blue top is similar to the blue shirt he wears as part of his school uniform. Then of course, there is Bee and Puppy Cat themselves. What will they be up to outside of their little episodic Eesh. temp work adventures? Well, Puppy Cat seems like he will be getting some backstory here. Some of it's implied Finally. in the present, and some of it's being legitimate backstories through flashbacks. A lot of the behind-the-scenes artwork shows flashbacks as the space pirate on the ship, and other characters as well. The space princess will be around, it seems, and it looks like she has a special heart-themed gun on the ship, which is really cute. There is also cool. this alien girl who I think is a fellow space pirate. What's really interesting to me is that her purple hair, darker skin, and bottle of purple stuff around her waist seems similar to Cardamon's mother, with the bottle of purple stuff around her neck. Weirder still is the baby has a heavy resemblance to Bee's father, yeah. which makes me think that all these characters are tied together in more ways than we think. We also seem to explore the connection puppy Does the baby and... Bee's father? Or... They say it's... Is the baby B's father or B? Because I thought the baby looked kind of like B, but I'm not really sure. Seems to have to be his father. He seems to know what some of this technology in the house is, including that one of them is apparently a tracking device that can be used to find B. Of course, they could always be setting up a plot where he learns about this from B first and then uses it to help her later, but there does seem to be some history here that we don't know about. As for B, it looks like she's going to have yet another romance, something that I think will get complicated if Deckard returns at the end of the season. Some people think it is actually one of his brothers, this one right here, but I don't know. Their hair looks kind of different to me, but- Is it- will it really get complicated for- with Deckard or whatever his name is? He like- I don't think so. I feel like they're- they didn't really like go into much of their romance, but it seemed more just like a crush to me. Like they both like had liked each other as more a crush and Deckard was staying basically for B, which is why he never really went to culinary school until like- much later on and his sister is the one that told him like like you need to go B needs to grow up like you can't stay for B like she needs to grow up and like move on on her own um basically what his like sister was telling him it seemed they didn't really seem like they seemed more like a crush I feel like really more than really anything um and he clearly like I feel like him leaving at the end was him moving on right he was clearly moving on from B I feel like it wouldn't, like, I mean, I can see it, yeah, it would cause some, like, tension and stuff, especially considering that if it is his brother, right, that's gonna cause some issues, like, a love triangle in the family, kind of sus, um, but he left, so, and I think B is mature enough to know that, I, like, she does act like, yeah, she acts immature, she acts silly, she's, have child tendencies, but I also feel like she is still mature enough uh, emotionally to understand that, like, he, he decided to move on and leave, right? Um, 
I feel like she recognized that like at the end of like season one. So I don't know. I maybe it might be an issue, maybe I probably I don't know. We'll see. Who knows? But it's hard to say. For me, what's most exciting is the return of the dark hands. At the end of season one, these hands came out of the dark hole and started destroying the donut planet, and we never really found out why. There's this small clip in season two, and a rather humorous one at that, that shows Puppycat inflating himself in order to crush a bunch of dark hands that seem to have appeared on yet another planet, so there seems to be a plan and a story for them in this season to come. B seems to be acting pretty action-y in this scene, even without her robot mode activated, and the planet is being epically destroyed, so it looks like a pretty serious scene. Hopefully we get some answers this time, instead of just an awesome fight scene that leaves us with more questions than anything else, but only time mm -hmm. will tell. There is still no release date in sight, but personally I think that may be a good thing for the future of the show as a whole. Streaming services are buying up properties like crazy, but one thing a lot of them do is buy exclusive rights, like Netflix does. If they do that and the service didn't renew them for a third season, we may never see the end of the story. Instead, I'm hoping that the show is taking longer to negotiate because Frederator wants to make sure that they could at least crowdfund for a third season to wrap up the storyline if they absolutely needed to. Or maybe that's just wishful thinking. Either way, we'll have to wait and see. That's all I have for you guys. Oh, right. That was interesting. I like that. That was really cool. I'm glad I watched that because I didn't know anything about what was happening with season two. So it actually gets me really, really excited for season two because it looks like it's going to be more of like a regular like show like uh, Adventure Time or like Steven Universe because it's a lot longer now and they're gonna be, it's going to be more story based. I think the episodes are a lot longer too. I think they're like, I think they're like 10 episodes, something like that. So I'm really excited to actually like get more into the story because I really like the story and it looks like they're really developing the plot and the characters. So I'm excited to see more new characters. I hope it doesn't like overshadow the story. I think they have a really good story going on. So I hope it's not like, like too much filler going on. And um, I'm excited to see how the brothers and the family like play a role into the story. Um, I am though, I do want to know more about like B and Puppycat and their background, especially uh, Puppycat's background. I think honestly, if they could, a spinoff show of Puppycat would be so cool. Um, I think the adventure sounds super fun and the character, um, uh, the character uh, storyboard that they had with like Puppycat and the Indian princess and then like the uh, tiny baby <laughs> and that looks so cool like the characters look so cool of it in and of itself and having a spin-off show if they if uh if they could of just like puppy cat and his adventures would also be really cool too i'd love to see that but uh yeah let me know what you guys think in the comments down below um uh, i feel like there's something else i wanted to say oh the oh one thing i wanted to mention um the dark hands seem like i think it's probably like it looks like a black hole or something or like a parasite maybe like a world eating parasite or like a black hole or something i guess i kind of maybe i wonder if that's going to be like the i wonder if that's like like the main villain or whatever in the show um is that like parasite thing i wonder if that black hole hand black hole thing has more to do with what happened with uh maybe with like puppy cat and like the alien person like that i don't know but anyways um let me know what you guys think is comment section, comment section down below uh what are your theories what do you think is going to happen in season two um if you've watched season two already do not spoil it for me please or anybody i will delete your comment okay <laughs> so um yeah just let me know what you guys theories are like what do you think about these theories what do you think about them? the breakdown um and yeah that's gonna be for this video like and subscribe if you enjoyed and follow me on my social to see more of my face and that's gonna be it i'll see you next time bye